Hey, what's up guys? I'm Dan H and welcome back to the project. Today we are going to be doing a fender swap on Black Beauty here. And no, not the easy side. We're going to be swapping the difficult side, the side with the antenna. So let's get started. Alright guys, so there's a million different reasons why you might want to change your fender. They could have little paint chips like this. They could have little dings like this. They can have rust spots like this, or they can be completely bashed like this. Either way, fender's got to come out, so we're going to start with the antenna. All right, guys, here we go. Here is the antenna, and I believe the stock antenna size is uh, 3 8 right there, 3 8 <laughs> So we just uh, spin that right off. Now, if you have an aftermarket antenna or whatever, you can just use a little adjustable. 3 8 works good for me. So that's off. Now on to the most important part. Boom. This guy. Now this is a number one size antenna nut. I'm not sure how many sizes there are or what number they go up to, but I know that this is your go-to size for your 90s Jeeps. This will cover your XJs, your ZJs, and your WJs. So you just slide your nut right on here. And then this is a 7 8 little wrench right there. There you go. It's that easy. And if you really want to get crazy, <laughs> right off. So grab one of these. They're awesome. If you guys don't have this, buy one. I'll leave the link in the description below. And again, number one antenna nut. All right, next step is going to require a brush. We got a 10 millimeter deep dish socket and some penetrating oil. So what we're going to do is we're going to get up under here and we're going to scrub that little nut this thing we got to take this off first this is the one you're gonna want come on come on now you may not even have these this is pretty much a stock setup there we go Oop. save that all right so now we got this right here this is the one that has that little fender support and this one, you really don't want to break. Ugh, there we go. All right, you're gonna want to scrub this one Ugh, as best as you can. I'm gonna put the camera down and go to work because it's really tough. I need seven hands to do this. And once it's scrubbed, you can go ahead and give it a little shot of that penetrating oil. There you go. And while you're at it, might as well get all three. Just to keep them from rusting, right? How's that for a shot? Good aim. Alright. This has got to be the weirdest video I've ever recorded, but this is actually working. I can kind of see better. So, got your 10 millimeter deep dish. There we go. And, make sure it's on loosen. Yes, it was on loosen. There we go. <laughs> it's not broken. Woohoo! It's gonna be a good day. It's almost like the further it gets, the harder it becomes because of all the layers of rust that's accumulating. <laughs> oh, there it is. It's off. And I lost it. Great. So now the fender will not be attached to the body. Whew! That part's exhausting. On to the easier parts now. And while we're down there, I'm just gonna hit these with our penetrating oil. These two bottom ones have a tendency to stick. All right, coming under the hood, we're gonna need to detach the fender from the header panel. So we're gonna wanna loosen up all these header panel bolts all across the front. We're also going to take off the headlight bezel because there's another one way down in there. So headlight bezel is coming out and I think we'll loosen up this side too just so we can uh, get some leverage to pull this off. So again, we're rocking the same 10 millimeter deep dish on the impact. And we're coming up here, Phillips head, screwdriver. You guys know how I love to use the screwdriver because the uh, impact 
cracks these brittle things, plus the head of the screw ends up tearing up the paint. So this is off. Put this in a place where we're not going to step on it, because I have done that too. And we're going to pull these turn signal lenses. There we go. Just leave that hanging. There we go. 10 millimeter. Turn signal. Ten millimeter. All right, let's give this thing a wiggle. All right, we wiggled this out. Now you may or may not have some aftermarket headlight wiring like I do, preventing you from getting full access to inside, but I think we'll be able to manage in here with a small little socket, get that Torx bit on, we'll do okay. But first, uh, we got the 10 millimeter still over here. Uh, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go up from underneath. We're gonna push this thing up on the bottom and we're gonna remove the two uh, 10 millimeter fasteners that connect the bumper end up to the bumper. Ooh, and there's that ding I was talking about. All right guys, we're underneath the bumper end and there are the two 10 millimeter hex nut fasteners. We're looking past the horn, but this is what you gotta get to. So I'll do my best. All right, we got the upside down <laughs> impact driver trick. One. Two. All right, got my T25 bit, my little bit wrench. This might do the trick. We'll get these uh, fender bolts off. All right, so far so good. I usually zip these in with the impact gun, but since I don't feel like taking apart all the headlight wiring, we're just gonna have to get in here and do it this way. No biggie, it's working. All right, well I got my little bit on this little bit socket wrench thingy. I'm just gonna get this upper uh, fender bolt inside the engine bay because this is kind of annoying to get a uh, impact gun on with this hood open. So we'll just go ahead and do this one by hand. <laughs> All right, got it. All right, here we go. Now much easier fender bolts. T25 on the impact. Just make sure you're pressing down nice and hard. You don't want to strip these. These things suck to strip. So that's it. Now we just got to get on the inside of the door. We got two in here inside. Now it's easier if you have a really long um, shaft, if you will. <laughs> it will facilitate the, uh, I guess, interior? I don't know. These other ones. Other fender bolts. And now these two down here. Yeah. All right. I think that'll do it. There we go. <laughs> right out. Fantastic. All right, guys. This next step is critical. You might not get a fender that has a fender flare on it. Or if you want to just replace your fender flare, you're going to need these brackets. And these, man, are the worst. They always rust, they always break. So what I'm gonna do right now before I do anything else is I am going to clean the rust off and you can see this fender isn't in the greatest of health. There's rust everywhere. So chances are, if I try to get these off, they're gonna just snap. So I'm gonna just go after them right now and wire brush them all. Then I'm gonna hit them with some PB blast and then maybe if I have to, I'll get the heat. So we are already really lucky with this one. This is a very important one. Now we're gonna pray we have as much success with these. So here goes nothing. And the penetrating oil. So um, this fender, uh, I know it's rusty, but it's not exactly garbage. I might reuse it in a future project. Who knows? So I got the fender resting on garbage can lids. 
It's a great way to cradle this thing so it doesn't get scratched up on the driveway. So yeah, we're gonna, you know what? Screw it, let me hit it with heat. Why not guys? A little heat treatment. Break the bonds of the rust. All right, we're gonna let this cool down and install the new fender. You're never gonna believe this, guys. I just dinged my new fender right down to the primer. I was going back into the garage to get my antenna washer and whacked it on something. I can't believe it. And I was mad, actually I was furious. You know, why, 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 poor me. But you know what? This is just a Jeep and it's gonna rot away. That's why we store up our treasures in heaven, guys. We don't worry about things that the moths will eat and decay or the rust will rot away. Better to do stuff, you know, to help your fellow man out, right? So, it's just another Jeep Fender. I'm sure I'll happen upon another one eventually. It is what it is. So, <laughs> dang it, <laughs> the very first thing we're gonna do is put on the Fender uh, antenna thingy. Where did I put that nut? Ah, here we go. Ugh, unbelievable. I'm still just a little bit in shock, if I'm being honest with you. So, <laughs> we're gonna use our good old number one <laughs> antenna nut. Unbelievable. And I'm gonna hand tighten that. Uh, still, wow. All right, antenna is on. We're gonna position this into place. All right, so when we slide on our fender, we'll get it into place. We're gonna make sure that this little flange slides in between the door and the little tabs with the nut washers, whatever, the nut something. Dang it, I always forget what they're called. They are clip nuts, yes. So they're gonna go in front of the clip nut. There we go. And in the front, they're gonna rest up right behind these tabs. And there, it's in place. All right guys, I am going to start hand threading all the uh, fender bolts on the top because it'll help me hold things in place when I'm all up under there. And you guessed it guys, I'm using a hearty dose of anti-seize. All right, and the door fender bolts. Now, if your Jeep had any shims, now's the time to put them in. Um, Black Beauty didn't have shims here. So, <laughs> I guess she's perfect. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. But this side didn't have shims, so that probably means the driver's side has double the shims. But I don't know, man. You guys in Toledo? Good quality control. Thumbs up to you. Eh, this side's looking real good. Dirty, but nice and straight. Nice and straight. Except for that ding. Dang it. All right, got my last three remaining Torx bits for the fender. Torx bits bolts. <laughs> Great, my little bit ratchet just broke. <laughs> Can't select it from loosen to tighten. It is stuck. Uh, what else, right? Oh boy. Alrighty. Now we're gonna wiggle back on our header panel. And I'm gonna tighten it up, starting with the side that I know is already straight. This way, that side of the header panel aligns straight with that original fender. All right, we got this corner aligned, and guys, you're gonna to wanna to hand tighten this because if you use your impact gun, you have a risk of stripping the other side of this fastener right out of the fiberglass. Not a big deal. If you do it, you can always throw some Gorilla Glue in there, suck it back in, but it's just a pain to do. 
Um, this way you will make sure you don't strip it. So now, the inside one. Nice, nice and straight. All right, gonna hand tighten this just a little bit. And you see this gap between the header panel and the fender? This is no good. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our weight into it like so, so this lines up flush. Once we got it where we want it, we can zip this in right here. And one more up top. There. Now that'll be square. And I'm still gonna put a little pressure on it. And pull the header panel with my hand while I tighten this. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Now that's a good alignment. And the same thing goes for the bottom guys. I'm just gonna apply some pressure, align the header panel where I need it. Send this on home. All right guys, here we go. We are gonna take these off, hopefully, with an impact gun. Um, I like the impact gun on a slow setting because this applies torque evenly, 360 degrees. If you're using like a socket or a wrench, you're only applying torque in one direction and that could bend the bolts or snap them. So I do like this. Plus the impact, that little shock helps break up the, um, the bonds. So we're gonna give this a shot and now's the time where we say our prayers. Our Father what in heaven, hallowed be thy name, my kingdom. Here we go, giving it to God. The big things and the little things. Well, we got one. Two. <laughs> Three. All right. The suspense is terrible. The suspense is terrible. He, he's going to go this time. I hope it'll last. <laughs> Can we go for four? All right, four. Come on, five. Uh oh. This uh, this might be rounded off. Oh man. I hope that's just a nine millimeter. All right, skip. If you guys have a nut that is rusted on, stripped, or breaks off in the bolt, this is an M5 by .08 thread, and they're 10 millimeter head. Wow. All right. <laughs> Here we go. One last one to go. All right, man. I'm gonna try a nine millimeter. A little smaller, hopefully it fits. Uh, never went seven for seven. Well, maybe one time. Usually one of them breaks. Come on, number nine. Number nine, riding volcano. Uh oh. Woo -hoo -hoo! It works. <laughs> we got it. And of course, I almost forgotten all the excitement. The last little eight millimeter self tapper. This holds the bottom of the. Fender flare onto the fender. Nice. There we go. Old fender. Reusable flare. Okay, so now we want to set our flare back on. Uh, or if you just want to change your flare, this is how you do it. Um, <laughs> you know, these are pretty crappy. Usually I'd pour 15 of these, but I'm running out of daylight, and you know what? I could always do this another day. <laughs> They're not terrible, and all the nuts came off, so that's a miracle on its own. Um, so yeah, how you set these back on, say one popped off, you should just take off the whole thing. You want to reset them on the clips where they go before you put them on the vehicle. If you try to like push them in, you might snap these tabs and it'll never sit right. So this is actually the proper way to put one of these fender flares back on. The OEM fender flares, if you will. So um, we got this set back in, all the clips. And of course, you guessed it guys, Annie sees. 
like crazy. All right, and this is extremely easy, guys. Line them up with the holes, push it in. When you get to the middle one, guys, don't forget to reattach that fender support bracket. Make sure that the wheel well lining is tucked in all around too. I'm gonna wanna make sure that's on the inside of the flare. There we go. All around like so. Nice. I don't think I'm gonna be able to do this holding the camera and putting these on one-handed. So you get the idea, just like we took them off. I'm gonna start with the middle one with the fender support and I'm gonna work my way around. Reattaching all those 10 millimeter, all seven 10 millimeter nuts back onto the fender flare. And as I go, I'm just gonna adjust them to the height I want it. You know, you could push this up and down. You're gonna wanna align it with the old uh, body line, just so you don't see that that scratch or whatever you call it. So yeah, that should be about the spot. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this on now. Okay guys, the final thing we gotta do is we're gonna have to match our pinstripe. Now this is a 3M pinstripe I used. It's a quarter inch pinstripe and it is a black reflective pinstripe. So you can't really see it in the day, but at night it glows nice and bright and silver. So love it, this is really cool. Uh, I used this to cover the factory white pinstripe, which didn't really go with my black beauty theme. So um, I, got a, I got a pinstripe that it was a little bit cooler, I think. Subtle mods. So I'm gonna go ahead and wipe it down with some rubbing alcohol. Gonna wanna make sure this thing sticks. This 3M pinstriping. Let's see. It comes in a roll of 50 feet. So it's plenty to do both sides. Um, you might wanna get a two pack, just in case it's not available if you ever need to do restriping. So I'll leave a link in the description below for this stuff. And um, sorry for you uh, 98 guys, I think 98 XJs had like dual pinstriping. So a little more difficult, but you guys can make it work. All right. Just gonna let that air dry a bit. And I already have cut and measured, or measured and cut this to length how I want it. And it was just sitting on the hood of the car in the sun, getting all warm. So let's see if we could, uh, there we go, peel this off. Nice and easy. All right, let's line this sucker up. Nice and even. Give it a little pull, keep it nice and straight. And then very carefully nip the tip. And once your stripe is installed and cut, don't forget to peel the coating. If you forget to peel this coating, you won't have your reflectivity. And that defeats the whole purpose. Beautiful.
All right. All right, we got the fender swap finished. Everything is looking really nice. Nice, straight, even gaps. We got our fender flare on, looking good, nice and straight. Uh, don't forget to put that eight millimeter fastener to hold the fender flare on at the bottom. And the wheel well lining is back in place. We even got that weird little star nut thing, washer or whatever, going over that fender support. Everything's solid, looking good. Matching our bumper ends, pretty good. They're doing all right. But yeah, I love the way it came out. Looking really good. Except for that dang dent. Dang it. All right, guys, that's all for my fender swap video. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to check the link in the description below. Get yourself an antenna nut. This thing makes it a whole lot easier than wrapping it with tape and using a channel lock to force it off. This will save your antenna from damage. So. That's it, guys. Remember to like and subscribe, and I will see you guys on the next project. Peace.